Hello there, Pokemon trainers! This is Trainer Connor, and you're going to be watching another Pokemon battle video today. If you guys end up enjoying this one, make sure you give me a like and subscribe. It helps out my channel a lot. I appreciate you. Now, if you guys haven't seen the other video that I posted last week, feel free to check it out because it's going to give you more insight as to what I'm uploading here. We are back at it in the Pokemon Showdown Beta, and we're going to be doing the Battle Factory. This is the secondary episode, as you can tell, and I had a lot of fun in the first episode, of course. What this is, I'll give you guys a quick rundown if you're not aware. Uh, Showdown Beta's Battle Factory feature, it generates a tier-based Pokemon team by random. It picks a random tier and six random Full evolved Pokemon we to battle with, and it's a lot of fun because it really ups your game a little bit. You have to create strategies based on the Pokemon that you have. It's a really fun thing. So, I hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's jump right into the battle screen here. My opponent in this video is none other than Absol Blog's Pokemon, one of my Twitter friends. He's a really good battler. Um, if you guys are into shiny hunting or just pokemon in general this guy is the guy to look up on youtube i'll put his youtube channel in the description a really fun guy we were actually in a phone call when we did this battle it's a lot of fun and we might do a showdown live at some point more details to come but not right now as we speak anyways though you look at our teams here we have the same pokemon like the same rotom the same hippogon it looks to me like we're doing Yu Yu, but I'm not sure because of Mammal Swine. The last time I saw Mammal Swine was in the OU tier. So I'm a little confused by it, but it looks like Yu Yu for the most part. Anyways, though, let's jump right into the match here. It was just a really fun match. I hope you guys enjoy it. So I'm going to start out with my Hapalgon, and my opponent also leads out with Hapalgon. So we got the exchange of Stealth Rocks here with both set up our Stealth Rocks. We have the same Hippogon and the same Rotom. So he switches out and goes into Rotom right now, which is fine with me because I go with the Toxic. And that's okay with me because he's wanted to stay in. I wanted the Hippogon to get poisoned, but that's okay. We get the Rotom, which is fine. I'm expecting him to use Defog to get rid of the Anchor Hazards. So... That was a great switch on my part here. And the poison is going to be racking up damage. I expected him to either go for his uh, full switch there, which works out great. So I go for my own defog. I could have gone for my own full switch, but I really wanted to get my... I mean, I, I want to get rid of the stuff off, but then I realized that they were already gone. So that was a waste of a turn there when I realized it at the time. So I expected him to U-turn there, which is why I went into Hippowdon, but he goes for the Brave Bird. Here he goes for the Taunt, and I'm like, oh man, because I wanted to get my, well, I really wanted to slack off and then get my Stealth Rocks afterwards. Doesn't work out here. Now this is where he surprises me with the Super Fang attack. For those who don't know, Super Fang does 50% damage and then 25% damage after the next turn. So, you see there, Klefki got a lot of damage taken from this Crobat. Now we end up using Thunder Wave, I'm really happy he didn't use Taunt there. That means I can go for my Spikes as he gets paralyzed. A little unfortunate there. And I'm going to hopefully get up another layer of Spikes. I really wanted to paralyze something else. And if I can catch the Chandelure, that would be amazing. Chandelure is one of the faster Pokemon here in this fight. Aside from Crobat, of course. And possibly my Scizor. I'm not too sure, but I get another very quick. Unfortunately, this Chandelure has Substitute. And I'm trying to break it with Klefki. I should have switched out right there, but that's fine. I want him to kill me. I want him to kill me, at least. <laughs> And that's great, because now I can go into something different. 
which is going to be Mammal Swan. Again, I think he's in the OU tier. So, I don't know. That's something that I'm just confused about. I go for Freeze Dry, and I catch the Primarina coming in, which is awesome because I'm able to two hit KO it. So, goodbye, Primarina. Didn't really do much in this game. Now, he goes into Rotom Mo form as he reveals the Z Power attack, and it's Bloom Doom. I resist it with Scizor, which is why I went into this thing. This Scizor is not Mega, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. I go for Knockoff, and I'm not sure why I did that, but that's fine, because I could have just gone for a U-turn or something. What you have to realize, though, when you're in the Battle Factory, the sets are random, so the move sets are just completely random, and we get a double down out of this, gosh darn it, so Scizor did his job, which is great. Now, on the double down, which are the best types of downs, I I decided to double out and go into Hip Palagon, and we actually did the same thing, so that was cool. So we have both of our Hip Palagons out right now, and this is going to be a war of who's going to get knocked out first. It's going to actually be my opponent's Hip Palagon who prevails, not going to lie, because we're going to be using Earthquake and Toxic and Slack Off, which were the three moves that we all had, and we just had to see who would be better out of the two. So, and you know, the HP level and the EVs and the IVs were taken into account here. Because, again, these were all generated, so it could have been the same, you know, IVs. It could have been the different IVs. You don't know. That's the beauty of it. So, in the end here, you see that I have less HP and my opponent has more, but I'm really happy I poisoned it. He actually did poison me, which is unfortunate, but in the end, we're both going to see, we're gonna find out like, who's gonna go down, and it looks like I'm gonna go down first, just based on what we're looking at here, which is, I guess, fine, because I can go into Rotom Mo, or I can go into Mammoth Swine to Revenge Kill it. I know that those two are faster than I power on. I'm just making sure that he doesn't slack off again. But at the same time, the poison is helping me out a lot, so that is something to keep in mind here as he goes for yet another slack off. And I'm like, alright, that's fine. Just let me go down here, I can just go into something different. That's all I ask. And my choice is going to be Mammoth Swine. So we go into Mammoth Swine right here, I go for the Icicle Crash. Now, I could have missed it right there, so I regret not using Ice Shard. I'll tell you that right now. He brings in Quagsire, and I have the Freeze Dry for it, but I'm like, alright, well, I know that, but I feel like I should use Haxorus, because I haven't used him yet. So, we'll see how we do. This was risky, because he went for the Scald, and he had the Burn, and I also have a Lumberry. Now I can use Dragon Dance. Hopefully we can use an Outrage to KO the Quagsire. Unfortunately, again, he has Cossack, and I, you know what? Cossack is one of the best non-attacking moves ever, just in general, because, like, Poison just racks up damage every turn. It's just so awesome, so that's why we're using it a lot. It's a two-hit KO with the plus one Outrage, but we manage to KO it, and we get another double down. That's two double downs in this fight. That's awesome. So, on the double down, which are the best types of downs, I have to say it once more, because why not, right? We have Mammal Swine out here, trying to use Ice Shard against Chandelure. I'm not really sure what I was thinking there. My guess is I wanted some more chip damage onto this Chandelure so I can bring in Rotom and hopefully revenge kill it. That's the best way to put it. I don't know, it's just. From what I'm seeing right now, it's, it just doesn't make sense. This is a moment of truth. I go for my Z power, hopefully to KO this Crobat, and we come out real short, but then he gets paralyzed. That was huge because Brave Bird would have obviously KO'd me from that range of HP, and the critical hit there did not matter. So, oh my god, that was a great game. Thank you, Absolblox Pokemon, for the match. That was epic. That was so crazy, you know, with the end game there. You know, I 
went for my Z power, failed the KO, and then he got paralyzed, so he could have gone for a Brave Bird and just KO'd me. So it was a 50 50 there. I won this one, but that's fine. Anyway, so thank you guys for coming to this video. If you end up enjoying this, be sure to like and subscribe. And I should have another battle for you soon. And uh, yeah, I guess that was a great day. I'll talk to you later.